to be with you. We're back. Welcome to season three, world worshipers. All you broken people of which we name ourselves among. (laughs) I take joy in realizing my brokenness before a perfect Savior. And my faith still holds. I tell you what, it's a good thing we have a foundation of faith because when, when hard times come, And we've said goodbye to several loved ones just this last week. I know many of you have too. And it rocks and shakes your faith. But you know that you know that you know. And if you don't know, you need to know that you know that God is faithful. He has never not been faithful. He will always be faithful. Regardless of what you see in front of you, it does not change the faithfulness of God. My faith still holds unto the Christ of Calvary. Oh, blessed rock of ages cleft for me. I'll gladly place my trust in him and in things that I cannot see. My faith still holds unto the Christ of Calvary. Great Bill Gaither song written many, many years ago. I was going to open with how big is God, how big and wide his vast domain. And every time I would start singing it, I would go into my faith still holds instead because the melodies are very similar when the, when the chorus starts. <laughs> and about the third or fourth time I did that today, God said, I'm trying to get through to you. <laughs> I want you to sing about your faith in me tonight for my people, for my children, to bolster their faith and to bolster your faith, McCalman. And so I testify of my faith in God. I don't understand at all why things happen the way we do. I don't agree with people who die before their time. I think we're still missing something. I know God is sovereign, but I still think we are, as the body of Christ, missing an important key to unlocking healing to people who we don't believe is is their time to go yet. Yes, it's appointed uh, every man a time to die, but there's a lot more to that than simply reading that verse at face value. I'm thinking, I'm dwelling on that. I'm studying more about that right now. But anyway... We're here to worship. We're here to sing over everything. If you've got sickness in you, if you know someone who's suffering from COVID or any other disease, sing over them tonight. And let's just rejoice in the Lord with everything that is within us. Now, tonight, you know, I have the prettiest producer in all of Texas. And... uh, And she's just ready to say hello to you tonight. Would you like to see Liz? Yes, we sure would. Okay, well, let's just go to Liz at camera two. (laughs) To be a a group sound. (laughs) Yeah, I I can't do a better audience than that. I'm sorry. (laughs) 
He's too funny. Hello, everyone. <laughs> it's me. It's me. <laughs> Not Ernest T. It's Liz McCalman. Welcome back to An Hour with Jesus. Season three. Isn't that exciting? We're excited here Yay. in the studio, all of us, Terry and me. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> thank you for tuning in, all of you who have tuned all over the world to come and take some time to worship our wonderful God. And as Terry was saying before, our faith still holds in Christ. I love that song. That's one of my, I was telling him earlier, this is one of my favorite Gaither songs. Um, it's just so powerful. If you know, I'm sure you'll take the time to, to listen to it. The lyrics are even more powerful um, as well as the, uh, the chorus. So anyway, I have some announcements, announcements here regarding our behind the scenes program we unfortunately won't be having that this weekend as we normally do that every first saturday of the month but uh terry will be traveling uh, doing ministry uh in new york and so therefore he won't be here to do that but we will jump right back in come october so make sure that you uh, stay tuned for that i also want to remind you of our website, which is newglory.org, and you can go in there and uh, and look for all kinds of things, whether uh, CDs and uh, or Terry's book or any other thing that you care to do there. Um, you can just uh, check us out there, and don't forget to become uh, a subscriber to, to YouTube and hit that notification bell so it'll let you know when we're up uh, on a new program. So um, I believe there's a testimony here that someone sent in to the ministry. And I'd like to read that for you. It's from Marilyn Robinson Moshoa. <coughs> Did I say that right, Moshoa? Yes. Or Moshos. She says, this program was special. When you started the back-to-back -back songs beginning with Cover Me With Your Feathers was when something wonderful happened. My daughter, Michelle, who lives in Utah, had been had been in horrible pain for months due to a pinched nerve in her lower spine. Ooh, that's painful. She had kept her job at the hospital. She is an RN plus more letters after her name. But standing or sitting is a bent, in a bent over position to not put pressure on the nerve. That's, wow, that's sad. Seeing a new doctor every week. While you were singing, I was moved to go before God's throne, asking God if I could stand in for my daughter. Then I raised one hand towards God, and with the other reached across the states and miles and put my hand on my back, on her back, sorry. That went on through the third and the fourth back-to-back -back songs. Suddenly, I, had, I heard the Holy Spirit praying, and I knew that God had touched my daughter. I have seen and experienced miracles of healing before, but not often. Not in such intensity that there was no room for doubt. When your program was over, I sent my daughter a message explaining my experience. She had been laying down for two days, unable to walk or bent over. Couldn't even sit. Here is her text message to me. Thank you for your prayers means ever so much. I just walked. Wow. Standing straight up to go to the bathroom and to get the dog a treat. Hallelujah. This this morning's text, sitting up and feeding my birds, making coffee and hot cereal. Isn't that a wonderful testimony? Thank you, Jesus. How powerful God is when he intervenes through his mercy uh, for us. Thank God. And we we bless you, Lord, for that wonderful, wonderful testimony yes. of healing. Hallelujah. Amen. So let's go back into worship with Terry. All right, baby. Thank you so much. Oh, I love testimonies like that because the Lord, <laughs> he is so good. Hallelujah. <laughs>
he has. He has been so, so, so good. And he is still good all the time. He really is. I uh, am having almost a little trouble staying composed tonight because of the goodness of the Lord. <laughs> He's just good. Liz and I, some of you know, we uh, about a week and a half, two weeks ago, went to Prague of the Czech Republic to record with the City of Prague Philharmonic Orchestra. And that's a group that I've worked with four other times, and um, it's so much more cost-effective. It's worth the trip overseas in order to uh, save a, a good bit of money over American musicians. And you know what? It was a hard trip. It was a really, really hard trip. It took 24 hours to get there because of incredible weather delays and just uh, waiting in airports for the next plane, uh, layover kind of thing. And um, But the Lord was good. Uh, we got... Our, we had to be tested before we left. We had to get tested as soon as we got there for the trip back home. Lots of stress involved with all of that. I almost missed the recording session because I couldn't find the doors to the studio. They don't say studio on them. They're just big brown doors. So you've got to know where you're going. I kept asking people if they knew where the studio was, and they said, no speak, no speak. So... I was within eight minutes of being late for my own session, and that cost lots and lots of money. Every minute cost lots of money. But you know what? I finally <laughs> found a girl walking on the sidewalk carrying a violin. That is a tip right there. Follow her. And she took me right to the studio. She didn't know she was leading me because I stayed behind her because I figured she doesn't speak the language that I speak anyway, so I won't confuse things and make her nervous. So I just followed her like a stalker <laughs> until I got to the studio. But it all worked out. We had seven hours of hard-fought recording in an 80-degree studio. But the goodness of the Lord was there. And I'm, I'm going to play uh, a rough mix on one song for you here in a second. And um, you know what? As soon as we got back home, I believe the next day, the restrictions tightened up for traveling to Prague. And unvaccinated people, which we are, are having to... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, isolate for for like four or five days, which would have been an absolute disaster for us. So the Lord knew exactly when to get us over there and when to get us back out, just in time. You see, when you think, oh, this is going so rough and, and nothing's coming together, God goes, hey, I'm seeing a bigger picture here. I'll give you grace to get through this because I'm good. I'm good. I'm good all the time. And so we give him praise and thanks and glory for uh, the recording. Uh, I'm working day and night on this right now. I am mentally exhausted, physically exhausted right now. This is crunch time. And um, got another week of work on this, and then I'm going to Nashville for five days to record probably the best group of Christian singers in America in Nashville. It'll be the first time that I've uh, spent... For this, it's quite pricey, but I feel like God wants me to do this project in such an excellent way, and I believe it'll be a great blessing to you. If God speaks to any of you to send donations for the album, we are many, many thousands over budget already, uh, but it's just the way it's worked out, and I'm not going to shortchange the kingdom and his work because of money. We're going to go through it, and we're going to do it in an excellent way to give him the most glory. This might be my last CD. Who knows? I don't know. Nobody knows about tomorrow except him. So I want to do this one right. It's going to have many of the songs that we've been singing here uh, in the An Hour with Jesus program, uh, all the new ones God's given me in the last couple of years. So I think it's going to be a real blessing to you. Really looking forward to getting the finished product out. It's going to be quite a while yet, so please don't ask. We're working, though. We really are working. All right, so 
I'm going to play a little bit now. Uh, the old song, I Surrender All, that's on the album.
His presence is real. And here tonight, It's Lord.
soak in his presence. where troubles vanish and our hearts are mended in the presence of the king I was um, again the events of the last several days and weeks have been 
uh, challenging from a Christian perspective. I'm speaking a personal experience. The church that Liz and I were attending for a short time in the last several months, we stopped visiting there uh, about maybe six weeks ago, but love the pastor, love his heart, love his spirit, and he passed away somewhere in his 50s, I think, because of COVID plus complications uh, with stroke and and um, you just, you shake your head sometimes. I don't have answers. I just don't. And I've faced this issue before with other people who have passed on before common sense would make you think that they should have. You know, going back to friends and loved ones in their early 30s and uh, leaving families of three and four children behind. You just don't understand it. And I'm not ever going to pretend to have the mind of God because he's got his own way of thinking. We can never, ever underestimate his sovereignty. There are things that he doesn't reveal to us because he doesn't reveal those to us. <laughs> That's the answer to that. He functions in realms that we are not privy to. But there's something in this charismatic heart of mine that says we're not seeing the power of God in the church because we're not experiencing the manifest presence of God in the church. We're going through religious services with songs that don't touch the throne of God and messages that don't stir and change the heart of man. Not across the board. Don't think that I'm judging anything. I'm looking at the overall picture. And you and I are a part of a powerless church right now. And I do believe that's why we're not seeing more things happen. When Jesus said to heal the sick and raise the dead, he wasn't saying just this few days that I'm here on the earth. He was giving the commandment for the New Testament church. And we're missing it, people of God. I'm missing it, and I'm not accepting the status quo. I believe there is a higher realm of his presence and his power that he wants to release on the earth in this critical time in history, in these certainly last days that we're living. And so I'm going to continue to seek him on it. I don't know what I can do to change that. I just know what I'm observing as I go from church to church. We have a form of godliness, and we wouldn't dare say that we deny the power thereof. But where's the power? Where's the glory? Where's the majesty of Jesus reigning in a service so that the schedule can't go on because the Holy Spirit is moving freely among his people? and touching sick and healing and bringing answers to problems like we know he does in the manifest presence of the king. Hallelujah. Let me just read a little bit out of the book of James. I hope you receive what I'm saying. I'm not an authority on anything. And I am aware of my ignorance in many things regarding the Word of God. But I also know what I've learned through the years. And I've been around a while now, and I've seen an awful lot in every kind of church situation you can even imagine. So I'm not speaking as one without any experience, that's for sure. Ah, James, the first chapter. Verse 2, count it all joy. Now, I don't know. I think God has this for somebody watching tonight or in the days or weeks to come, all right? I felt like he led me to this passage tonight for this service. Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds. For you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. And let steadfastness have its full effect, 
that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God who gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given him. But let him ask in faith with no doubting, for the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. For that person must not suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. Let the lowly brother boast in his exaltation, and let the rich in his humiliation, because like a flower of the grass he will pass away. For the sun rises with its scorching heat, and withers the grass, its flowers, its flower falls, and its beauty perishes. So also will the rich man fade away in the midst of his pursuits. Blessed is the man who remains steadfast. All right? Under trial, it says, remain steadfast in the one who doesn't change. Some trust in horses, some trust in chariots, but you and I, we're going to trust in the name of the Lord our God. Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial. For when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, and he himself tempts no one. But each person is tempted when he is lured away and enticed by his own desire. Then desire, when it is conceived, gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is fully grown, brings forth death. So do not be deceived, my beloved brothers, for every good and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. Of his own will he brought us forth by the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. In trials, we need to remain steadfast. When, when the testing of our faith happens, hold fast. You know, my precious wife Liz, Lost her brother at the end of July, then lost her sister just a few weeks ago. And she's the only remaining sibling now. Her mom and dad have gone to heaven. And it's been difficult for her. And she reflects, especially on her sister, who she was closer to. She reflects every day and every night right now. She'll send me pictures to my phone on something that they share together or a memory of the past. But I see a steadfastness in her because she's rooted and grounded in her faith in Christ. She cries. She wishes what might have been, what could have been, what should have been. She has regrets. I have regrets. You have regrets. Huh. Who doesn't have regrets? Oh, if I could do this over again, I would have done this this way. You know what? That's called life. We have successes and we have failures. We have victories and we have defeats. But the one thing that doesn't change is the faithfulness of God. See, Terry, how can you say that when such and such a person died and such and such a thing happened to them and because the faithfulness of God does not hinge on good things happening to you. Let's grow up a little bit. The faithfulness of God is the faithfulness of God. He who has begun a good work in you will be faithful to complete that work, whether you agree with the roadmap that he's put in front of you or not. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. God is faithful. 
He doesn't know how not to be faithful. He's always going to be faithful. So if we keep our eyes fixed on him, the author and finisher of our faith, everything is going to be all right. <laughs> I can promise you that. You take your eyes off of Jesus and put them on man. I don't care who the man is. I don't care what he looks like on the outside. He is going to let you down. There hasn't been a man yet who hasn't. Except Jesus. <laughs> oh, praise God. Praise God. Well, I hope, I hope, I hope that that means something to you tonight. If you're going through a trial, you will go through the trial. All right? I know many of you are. Hmm. Let's see. Where am I going? I was just going to do all favorites of yours tonight. Of course, God never seems to follow my blueprint. Uh, I was just going to try to do every song that has been a biggie through our ministry that a lot of people always request when we're out ministering. And, um <laughs> But you know this one, and this one is always a favorite. This one is still pertinent because it's talking about the worship around the throne of God. Can you hear the sound of heaven? Like the sound of many waters. It's the sound of worship coming from His throne. There are cries of adoration as men from every nation lift their voice
forgiveness flow joy returning unto you oh Lord oh 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 worship him with me Blessing and honor. Blessing and honor. Be unto you, Lord. Hallelujah. What a wonderful time in here. I hope it's been wonderful by you. It's been wonderful in here tonight. Um... I, as Liz mentioned, will not be having a behind the scenes this month because I'm out of town and uh, so much going on. I will be actually in New York City and that service with my dear sister Elsie Obed, uh, my near Nigerian friend, our Nigerian friend, such a precious lady. Uh, they will be live streaming it and so I believe Pat in the little chat window for those of you looking on live right now is giving you information on how you can watch. I believe it will start at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. And uh, it's a long service. It'll go till about 4 p.m. Eastern Time. So 10 o'clock Central to 3 o'clock Central. Uh, my friend Phil Driscoll will be there. My friend Brandon Roberson will be there. I can't remember all the guests, but she has several artists coming, as she always does. And I love hanging out with those guys, even though it's only for a very short time. But we're going to worship His Majesty over New York like we have, I think, for probably the last uh, maybe 18 years. I've only missed maybe two of those. Uh, 18 years I've been with her every single year so this is a regular thing on our calendar the Labor Day weekend here in America and I always look forward to worshiping with God's people around New York City and worshiping over the nations 
So tune into that if you've got some free time on Saturday, and uh, we'll, we'll rejoice together. Uh, once again, the website is newglory.org. You can order any product there. You can even make a donation there. You could even become a glory partner and uh, be a monthly contributor to our ministry to help us do what we do around the world and right here for an hour with Jesus. And we appreciate so many of you who have become partners. We hope for another couple of hundred in the coming season here to join us on this journey, this quest for the manifest presence of God. Again, if the Lord leads you to help us with the album, there's been several who have given so generously so, so far, and I so much thank you from the bottom of my heart for your, your contributions, your help. We need it. So um, that's about all I've got for tonight. It's been a great first session here in the third season of An Hour with Jesus. And we will see you right back here next Wednesday night at 7 o'clock Central, 8 o'clock Eastern, 5 o'clock Pacific, or wherever you are around the world. Thanks for tuning. We love you. We appreciate you tuning in. Tell your friends about this. Share this program so that we can uh, invite more and more people to join this big worship family around the earth. Until we meet again, bye-bye for now.